Nicola Hill joins us now live from London. Nicola, we've been talking about this all day. <laughs> it's very worrying. Um, how bad... OK, first of all, what it exactly is aerosol transmission and how concerned should we be about it? Yes, it's, it certainly sounds worrying, doesn't it? So aerosol transmission is the transmission of the tiniest possible droplets that we emit when we cough, sneeze, talk, breathe, whatever. So these are so small, these are one fifth of a millionth of a millimeter. I got that absolutely correct there, yes. So they're really, really tiny and they can stay in the air for much, much longer than the heavier droplets that we've discussed in the past, Maria. The ones that we know fall to the ground between one and two metres when we cough or speak, sing, whatever. So it's these very, very tiny ones that the scientists who've written this open letter that's going to be published in the, in the Journal of Clinical Infectious Diseases. And it's an open letter to the WHO saying that they really need to take the possibility of people becoming infected by aerosol transmission into account. Now, to, now at the moment, the WHO says this is a possibility in hospital settings where you have operations, you have people being intubated in intensive care, um, COVID-19 people, or if they're being operated on. And that's why healthcare workers are wearing these, what we all have now learnt about, these N95 respiratory masks, which protect them when they're inhaling um, any anything in the air that might have these tiny, tiny aerosol droplets in them. So the scientists are saying, in fact, this is happening elsewhere. And they do cite these meat factories, these meat packing factories, because there's been such an alarming number of people who've become infected. And they say that this is due to aerosol transmissions. It's causing debate. Now, I spoke to Professor Ian Briley. He's a virologist, professor of virologist, virology at Cambridge University this morning. And I said to him, look, is this possible? And he went, yes, of course it's possible. But what he says hasn't been confirmed at the moment, and it's difficult to confirm, is how infectious these droplets are. Now, he says the reason there's a problem confirming this is because to have a, a laboratory in which you can do these studies, it has to have something called CL3, that's clearance level 3. Um, so it has to be incredibly safe and protected so that people working in there are not going to become infected and also the virus can't be released. Um, then you have to swab the atmosphere, then you have to see whether that swab infects the tissue cells in the laboratory. All very complicated and that hasn't been shown at the moment which is why the WHO is downplaying this but of course you have got these scientists saying look we don't know about it we know that aerosol transmission does go on why not start taking precautions why not change the way that buildings are have their air conditioning circulations bring in you know bring in certain guidance to prevent this it's so concerning um so what can we do then? What can, I mean, here I am speaking <laughs> to, to lots of people around me here. Um, what can we do to protect ourselves? I know you said it, it is really more of a case and, and a worry in a hospital setting, but what can the general public do? Well, these, these scientists are saying that actually you, a lot of the precautions can be done in most buildings by changing building engineering systems that are in place with air conditioning and things like that. Having something like air disinfectants in place or having um, particulate filtration systems in place. And they say this doesn't have to be a complicated job. And that's why they want the WHO to acknowledge that there is a risk of aerosol transmission. And the WHO is also at odds with recommendations that many scientists, many doctors and very several governments have now put in place, which is the wearing of masks in enclosed spaces. Um, so if you're going shopping, if you're working or whatever, something like that. So I said, I asked Professor Briley about that, you know, what should we be doing? I said to him, look, what, you know, is air conditioning safe? What should we be doing? He says having windows open, having fresh air around is vital because then you are circulating fresh air around. And this is one of the things that you shouldn't be circulating air that's, that's not been um, changed um, because then you're just recirculating um, virus laden um, air. Um, he also said that, you know, keeping that physical distance is important. 
Um, if you're working in an office environment, try and keep that distance or wear a mask, have fresh air going around. But it did say to me, we, we have to live with this virus. You know, if you want to completely self-isolate, not see anybody, don't go anywhere, then yes, you're going to reduce your risks of getting COVID-19, but you're going to become depressed. You're going to have other illnesses as well. So I think this is one of these things where we have to manage the risk. We have to evaluate how we want to live our lives as the science grows and we learn more about it. Absolutely, and we're learning every single day something new, and I know you're learning more than we are as you're so close to this subject. Nicola, thank you so much once again. Nicola here, live for us there in London.